Now, he's been criticised over a string of offensive text messages and tonight the former Cardiff boss, Malky Mackay, apologised for any offence he caused. Well, let's discuss the issue now with sports writer Natasha Henry, who's here with me. Uh, were you surprised when you saw the content of these text messages when they did emerge? I wasn't surprised at all, which I think is a really damning statement about my experiences and opinions in the world of football, that they didn't surprise me. So how rare or otherwise do you think then views such as these are in football? I think they're more widespread than most people think. Um, there seems to have been surprise, I think, because outwardly Malky Mackay seems like a very friendly, very nice guy, and that's where a lot of the surprises come from, as well as the fact that people who possibly don't experience discrimination in the world of football don't realise that it goes on. And he has apologised this evening, but you say part of the surprise comes from the fact that he seemed to be a friendly manager. Some are expressing surprise that he's relatively young as well. He's been around in the last few years when there have been real efforts to try and stamp out discrimination of any kind, whether it's racism or sexism or homophobia. Yeah. Does that make it more surprising? I think it's very disappointing that a man of 42 is still making comments like that. Not that you could justify it at all, but if he was older, then we could possibly rationalise his thought process. But I think when you work in an industry such as football, if you look off the pitch, it's so undiverse. So when you have a situation where there's very few people of colour, very few women in the boardrooms, in the media, at administrative level, wouldn't you expect to, to see these types of comments? And what about the response since the texts emerged? We had the statement from the, the League Managers Association, which they have apologised for since, but their initial response uh, said they described, they said it was wrong, but they described it as friendly banter, didn't they? I mean, I, I really don't appreciate this word banter. Banter is if I cook you dinner and I'm an awful cook and me and you have a laugh and a joke about it, that's what banter should be. Banter is not about insulting people. It's becoming the usual excuse for when you say something that's completely unacceptable. And their statement showed a complete lack of awareness. It was a shambles. Really, they should have said, we can't say anything. The investigation's going on and we will offer what support we can. But they... They attempted to justify what he did and there is no justification for it. Uh, the FA took no action against uh, Richard Scudamore, the uh, Premier League uh, chief executive, for, for controversial emails. In that situation, they just said it was policy not to act on private communications. Do you think that that's a, a defence in a situation like this? Not at all. I think when you're working in a job that is um, a public forum, you have to be more conscious, more aware of the things you say and the things you do. And I don't think saying it was between me and a friend is, is an excuse. And the Football Association investigation is underway now into th these text messages. What kind of response would you like to see? I think they have a real opportunity to say that we're actually doing something about discrimination. We're not just giving you the quotes you want or the sound bites you want. We're actively trying to show that if you do partake in racist or sexist comments, then we will do our best to stop you being involved with football. And Kick It Out, of course, has been working hard to try and stamp out discrimination. Do, do you feel, they've been doing their work for 20 years, do you feel that they are making progress? I think they are making progress, but when I say about the FA coming out with their good quotes and comments, if we look at the amount of money in football and the pitiful amount that the PFA, the FA and the Premier League give to Kick It Out, those people work so hard on a minimum wage. If they were really passionate about making a difference, they would give them a budget that would allow them to do the great work that they do on a bigger scale. And what would that involve? How do you change attitudes if you feel that those are attitudes that you think are familiar within football? I think part of the problem is people don't know where and how to complain. So myself, I experienced some fans chanting in something the other day and I didn't know who to talk to about it. People don't know that Kick It Out isn't just about racism, it's any form of discrimination. We also have Show Racism, the red card. But you need to educate people so they know where and who they can go to when they do experience these type of things. And are you optimistic that in the future uh, there will be uh, gay players who feel confident to come out, there'll be women in the boardroom, and that this kind of talk will be eliminated? I mean, we have had women in the boardroom. We've had Heather Rabatz at Millwall, and we obviously have Karen Brady. 
I would like to sit here and say I hope it gets better. Um, I think it will get better, but possibly not quick enough for what I would personally like. Well, Natasha Henry, very interesting to hear your views tonight. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.